Well, today's cheese is Edam, and Edam is a Dutch cheese. It was one of the first cheeses actually to be waxed, uh, and that was due to the Dutch being big traders in the 16th and 17th century, and they needed to wax the cheese so that it would prolong its life and it could travel to all the different colonies and trading partners that they had throughout the world. So here is Edam. Normally it's round, um, but unfortunately I don't have a round mold. So um, I will use my normal um, 165 millimeter uh, cheese mold and uh, we'll press it um, just like normal. So on with the cheese. Well, curd nerds, the ingredients are 10 liters of full cream milk, one eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture. In this case, I used MO30, 2.5 mils or half a teaspoon of calcium chloride diluted in water, 2.5 mil or half a teaspoon of liquid rennet diluted in a quarter of a cup of water. You'll also need some saturated brine solution and some cheese wax. So I'm just uh, getting rid of the excess cream on the top. Now I'll just heat the milk to 31 degrees Celsius or 88 Fahrenheit. And we add in our starter culture. So just sprinkle that over the top and we're gonna let that rehydrate for about 30 seconds or so as it's a freeze dried direct vat inoculation culture. So we'll give that a stir now. So we stir for about mm, a minute or so, just to make sure that it's all thoroughly mixed through. And now we're gonna let that rest for 30 minutes. Thank you, Siri. Just make sure that that's covered so no dust or hair or anything like that gets into your cheese. So 30 minutes later, the uh, a bit of the acid, sorry, a bit of the uh, lactose has been converted to lactic acid, and raised the overall acidity of the cheese, making it ready for the calcium chloride. Now, this is pasteurized milk, but it's unhomogenized, so I thought I'd add in a little bit of calcium chloride anyway, just to fortify it and make it uh, more susceptible to a good curd set. Now, because the acidity has been raised up, as I mentioned, we're now gonna add in the, the rennet. Now, rennet sets better when the milk is a little bit more acidic than normal. Okay, so we're just, as we're stirring, we're pouring in the rennet. Now, I'm gonna stir that for about a minute. cover that. Now it took 40 minutes to get a clean break. I'm just going to show you how we do that. Now I did have some uh, some viewers uh, mention that they didn't like me putting my pinky into the milk. So I'm just trying another method here. This is just splitting it, uh, making sure we get a clean break with a knife. You put it in a 30 degree angle and just lift it up and the milk breaks. And if it breaks okay then you can cut it like we are now. If it doesn't then leave it for another five minutes and that should be fine and should get a clean break. Anyway, so I've sped this bit up. This is uh, cutting the curd. So I've made the horizontal cuts with my curd cutter. Now I'm just doing the vertical cuts. So we'll do it one way and then we turn the knife perpendicular and then we do it the other way. And the curd size for this cheese is um, half an inch or 1.25 centimeters. So I'm going to let that rest for five minutes and that just helps uh, heal the curds so when you stir, stir them then uh, they don't split into uh, goo. So we give that a good stir now. You can see they're quite firm which is good. That's what we're after. Now the curd for this cheese is quite soft to start with. So we're gonna bring the heat up by two degrees, up to 33 Celsius or 92 Fahrenheit, over the course of 20 minutes. So it's very slow heating. You notice after 20 minutes of stirring, the curd has shrunk dramatically. So that's a good sign that all's going well. 
There's no matting, so yeah, don't forget to stir constantly for that 20 minutes. So we're just going to let that settle to the bottom now. Now, Edam is a washed curd cheese. So what that means is we remove some of the whey and we replace it with warm water. Now you can see here I've got two pots other than the main um, uh, milk pot. So this one has water in it. I've heated it up to about 35 degrees Celsius. And in the other pot I've just uh, sanitized a sieve. And I'll show you the magic of the sieve in a second. So they're just sitting on the side there, ready to go. So after the five minutes has elapsed, I've moved the empty pot, or sorry, taken the sieve out, drained the water out, and I've got just got a pot there ready to take some of the excess whey. So we're going to ladle, so put the sieve in, so we don't get any curds in our ladle. Pretty clever, eh? All right, so we're just gonna ladle out the whey until we hit the level of the curds. So it's about three or four liters Maybe five, depends on how uh, your curds have sunk. So the beauty of using the sieve is you don't get any curds uh, in the liquid, which is fantastic. We've gone down a fair way and there's the top of the curds. So it looks like it's about four Maybe five litres, because that uh, smaller pot that I'm pouring the whey into is a two-gallon pot, which is 7.6 litres. So maybe about four and a half, maybe five litres of whey. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take that warm water that I uh, heated up previously, and we're going to pour that into the curds. And what this does, it reduces the acidity of the curds, because we've taken away the way, pardon the pun, and uh, we're going to wash the curd and it reduces the acidity. Therefore, the cheese is not as strong as, say, a normal cheddar. That's why Edam is a very subtle cheese. So I filled that up to the level that the whey was originally, and we'll give that a good stir. Now you've got to get it up to a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius or 99 Fahrenheit and that's over a period of 30 minutes. Now you may, may have to heat it up again uh, to get to that temperature. Now 30 minutes later after all that stirring you've washed your curd and now we're going to drain it. So this is in the main pot. Remember we do have a pot of whey so don't tip the other pot out. We're going to need that in a minute. So just drain this out. Now you could reserve the whey. There's not a lot of protein in it. It wouldn't make a very good whey ricotta because it's mostly water at this stage. So just pour your curds into your cheese cloth lined colander. Get it out as best as you can. Scrape the rest. Just make sure your hands are clean. I sprayed mine with vinegar before I started touching the curds. Now we're just going to bundle that cheesecloth into, uh, this is a 165 millimeter wide um, uh, cheese, cheese mold. Sorry, I forgot the name of it there for a second. Yeah, cheese mold. So just uh, make sure that that's all straight. And we put the follower on top and we're gonna press that down a medium pressing. So I would estimate that's about Ooh, 25 pounds or about 12 kilos of weight. So I've half closed the spring, the 50 pound spring on my press. And you can see there, I'll just, there it is, it's about half closed. Let's give it an extra twist because as the cheese shrinks, the, uh, the spring expands. You want constant pressure. Now this is only for, for 20 minutes. Oh, sorry, for 30 minutes. We press for 30 minutes. Uh, in the meanwhile, what you need to do is heat that reserved whey you had for um, at up to 50 degrees Celsius, which is 122 Fahrenheit. So the 30 minutes has elapsed that we've pressed the cheese. I'm going to take it out of there. 
And we're going to transfer that into the hot way. Now I figure that this helps um, knit the curd a lot better by um, putting it into the hot way and you won't have any mechanical holes in the cheese. So I'm just making sure that the cheese cloth is not going to stick to the cheese. Just loosen that off a little bit and then just uh, pick it up for convenience sake. I'm going to plonk that into the way. There we go, nice little parcel of Edom. There we go, into the hot way. Uh, nothing fancy, just let that rest. I'll just twist the top off of the cheesecloth there. And you leave that in there for 20 minutes. So you do need to flip it once while it's in there. And then uh, I did take the cheesecloth off about halfway through when I flipped it. So take it out of the way, pop it into your cheesecloth, and we're going to press that again. And we're going to press that at a firm pressure, which is, um, I've got my uh, cheese press at 50 pounds of pressure, which is 22 and a half kilograms. So I'm going to tighten the spring all the way up on my cheese press. So you're trying to get the curds to knit as tight as they possibly can. So this is initially for six hours. And then we're going to take it out. There we go, there's a bit of a vinegar spray. Make sure I've got no unwanted bacteria or mould on my hand while I handle the cheese. And we're going to take it out of the mould. And we're going to flip it over and we're going to press it again. Just make sure there's no hairs or dust or anything like that on your cheese. And we just repress that, fold over your cheesecloth, put the follower on top and then tighten up the spring. So all the way down, 50 pounds of pressure again or 12.5. Sorry, uh, 22.5 kilos. Now we're going to leave it this time for seven hours. Now for me, this was five o'clock in the morning. And luckily it was Anzac Day here in Australia. I had to get up for the dawn service anyway. So here's me in my best clothes. <laughs> I'm going to now put the, the pressed cheese, the fully pressed cheese, into the brine. So this is how we salt this cheese. We uh, have a fully saturated brine there in the red container in the sink. And we're going to leave it in there for 12 hours. Just make sure there's no uh, bits of fluff or anything like that from the cheesecloth. Did have a bit of trouble with that cheesecloth that had a little bit of fluff on it. So it did stick the cheese. I managed to get that off. So there it is, the cheese is floating. It's a good sign that your uh, your brine is fully saturated. So just put a little protector on top, which pushes it down under the water. So I just put the top on, it's a little bit full. There we go. So you just let that rest at, at uh, room temperature. Now I did flip it at the six hour mark. And uh, now this is finished, we're ready to take it out of the brine and we're going to air dry it for two to three days. So once again because that cheese cloth had a bit of fluff on it I had to pick the bits of fluff off unfortunately. I did throw the cheese cloth into the bin. There we go nice. I did smooth it down all over because there were some uh, mechanical bumps on it from the press. So that's all smooth, lovely looking cheese. And we are now going to let that air dry, as I said, for two to three days. And then once it's dry, I'm going to wax the cheese. Uh, and then we're going to keep it in the cheese fridge at 13 degrees Celsius for two months turning weekly. Hope you enjoyed the video tutorial. You can pick up any kits or supplies over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. We will have a follow-up taste test once the Edom is ready so stay tuned for that don't forget to subscribe 
Thanks for watching.